Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Learn Fabric. Today, we are jumping in and we're going to learn how to upload files from our desktop and a couple different ways of uh, which we can do that into a Fabric Lake House. All right, with that, Tommy, take it away. Yeah, and it's absolutely uh, pretty crazy the ability. One of the things uh, Microsoft's really been uh, um, pushing is the one lake is really the one drive for data. And you'll see just how easy that is now just to bring data into a Power BI environment uh, simply just by uploading using UI. So I'm in my Fabric workspace here. I have a lake house. And what I want to do is I'm going to go right into the lake house and it's going to bring me to the general area here. Now, I have no data right now. I have no uh, tables and I have no files. So there's a lot of options, uh, a lot of kind of paths that I may want to take here, but let's just upload a file um, and just do a real simple. I'm going to do some best practices first. So one of the things I definitely want to do is I want to create a subfolder under files. Generally speaking, lake houses are going to have some certain structure and organization. You may have more than just a simple data model in a one particular lake house. So why don't we go ahead and just create one uh, subfolder. So what I'm gonna do is just cl uh, click on the files icon. And sometimes you may not see it if your sidebar is a little uh, little small. It's the ellipsis a, though. The ellipsis, you wanna, yes. Yeah, click on the ellipsis or right at click. the end. Yep. Yeah. And we're gonna say new subfolder. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna name this financials and we'll create our first subfolder so now i have a subfolder created and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to upload a single file here so really easy there's two ways to do this i can actually do this either from choosing the ellipses or right click and choose upload and as you can see that gives me the option to upload files or a folder mm -hmm. or i can choose get data from the ribbon and I can actually choose from other um, items and artifacts in Fabric, pipeline, data flow, or even a shortcut to get data. Uh, in this case, why don't we just upload a single file and we'll just add it to our financials folder. So we'll go to upload files and I'm gonna go ahead and just click into the uh, menu bar, which brings up really everything that I need to see. Uh, this is actually a, uh, repo that you can actually use yourself as well. So feel free to go ahead and um, actually go to a Learn Fabric Power BI Tips repo. And we actually have some data already that uh, you can uh, follow along with us. So I'm gonna go ahead, there's a financial sample CSV file. I'm gonna go ahead and choose, and I'm gonna choose open. And I'm gonna say upload. And we'll see that it's completed. Now, I may not see it initially because in the UI, I do need to refresh. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to go over the financials uh, subfolder and I'm going to actually choose refresh. And we should see if it's actually went to my uh, uh, main top level hierarchy of the file, but there's no worries there. I can easily move this. Should be able to move it just by dragging and dropping. And now we have our financial samples CSV file ready to go. That's interesting, Tommy, that you note that because clicking the get data and uploading the files, even though you had the financials folder selected, it did not upload the file into the financials folder. If you want to skip the movement activity of having mm -hmm. to drag and drop a file, you could just right click on the financials folder like you like Tommy has done here, and then you can click directly the upload files, and this will place the file directly in that financial folder that we created earlier. Okay, cool. What happens if I want to upload a whole bunch of files, Tommy? What could I do to upload a whole folder? Well, it's actually super easy and I'm um, glad you asked, Mike. So we can actually go to the files again. And when we go to right click on files, I can even do this on a subfolder as well. I'm going to choose upload and I'm going to say upload a folder. So I'm just going to simply go here, go back to my UI. And I have here a, uh, again, a repo. We have our baseball and we have some data in here that's just a simple folder that all we need. So why don't we go here, choose the bronze folder. And we're going to upload all of, and it's letting me know that there are five files in that folder. Do I want to upload all those files as well? I'll choose upload and let's go ahead and click on upload. There's another option here in this menu as well that I want to point out is there's another option here called overwrite if folder already exists. So if that option is turned on, if you accidentally upload or want to upload over top of something, 
if the folder of what you're trying to upload in this case, we're uploading the folder named bronze, if that bronze folder already exists, then you would it would fail and say, hey, look, this folder already exists. You can't upload over top of this. And this is the mm -hmm. very similar experience to what you would find in Azure Storage Explorer when you're using Azure Storage Explorer to also upload files. So again, a lot of the UI that you're seeing here is already familiar in other tools. You're now just getting brought that UI inside the context of Power BI. Okay, great. We've got our, our new data now. What's interesting though too is the the subfolder the system even though there was a subfolder and a subfolder it really just took only the name of the folder that we chose. Correct. So it was so now we have this bronze and I may actually want to change this so I'm going to go ahead and just choose the bronze folder and I'm going to say rename. Mm -hmm. We'll call this baseball. Yeah, and you can do that anytime you want. You can actually rename these folders so they make sense. Um again, Tommy and you are trying to follow some best practices. I would probably recommend against uploading individual files into the folder named files because that's like the, the highest level of there um, there's going to be too much information At, if you had a couple three or four or five files you're going to try to upload to your lake yeah that makes sense but you know as you get more context and there's going to be a lot more data the idea here is you're going to have a lot of information potentially inside your lake house so i'd recommend right away start creating folders or logical grouping of what your data is doing inside that folder structure um, I'd also recommend too, if you're building this as a process in the future, if you're going to upload the same type of data over mm -hmm. and over again, I'd recommend adopting some sort of naming schema in the folder structure that aligns to year, month, and day date analysis. So that way you have a, a folder structure that would align to the day you uploaded the file. So the name of the file would never change. That would uh, help you when you load things downstream, but then the the folder structure actually helps you identify when the files were uploaded into your system so just a just a kind of a general rule of thumb there when you're talking about lake houses or lake house designs um, those are some things that i use as best practices to help me organize and keep my content consistent as i build there well this is neat tommy this is all through the ui um, what other ways could we connect into this data to see this information in addition to just connecting here through the website well, here's what's really cool. You may have not known this, and when Microsoft did say that uh, OneLake is the, going to be the OneDrive for data, they were serious. There's actually something you can download right now that actually works just like OneDrive on your computer and actually syncs all of your data and items from the uh, from OneLake and Microsoft Fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Windows Explorer here, and I, you can actually see here I actually have a folder my my top level. That is my one lake uh, application. And again, there's an icon in the very bottom of my taskbar that says it's the one lake. So, so this, yeah. is, this is a file. So I put the link for this just to quickly jump in here real quick, Tommy. I have a link for the documentation on this. This is one lake file explorer is the tool. And you install this locally on your machine. And then I think, Tommy, again, our, our assumption here is every one lake that you have access to inside your tenant. Yep. There's a now a folder, and so you can see right here, Tommy's highlighting the demo learn fabric external folder, which is the name of his one lake, um, or that is the, the area of the workspace where this comes from. So this is the, the workspace name that you're seeing in that folder structure. Yeah, and we can see exactly how that works together. So in my the Great Lake, you can see here, I have my workspace, it starts with the workspaces. We have my demo learn fabric workspace. There's the great There's our lake, lake, house. lake house. Excellent. And I can see a files Boom. table and warehouse system. And there should be baseball and financials. And I can go in here and look at that. Look at that. Actually, I just gotta, oh, that's so cool. Just got to sync that. And let's see if that works here. Or we'll refresh this guy here. So, all right. So just take some time. Sometimes it takes a little time. There we go. Baseballs and financials. Here's the CSV file, and it's not a link to it. It is synced to just like OneDrive, where I can open this just like I could open any other Excel file or any other uh, file from uh, from OneDrive. There it is. You can There's see our here, file. Here's my. Here's my. Mm -hmm. I can edit this, and if I save it, it will go back to Look at that. the Lake House. Oh, that's cool. Back, uh, seamlessly. Oh boy. Uh, I can see this, yeah. this, this is going to make some more headaches for data engineers because it'll be like, well, it's so easy. I can just upload my files here. And, uh, I dislike using CSV files or Excel files as my source for information, but at least now you have another, uh, another area. It makes it easier for business users to get data into the cloud. 
And this is also really great too when it comes to uh, some of the use cases Microsoft's been showing is not just CSV files and Parquet files, um, but also even images, uh, uh, media content that people are trying to store. And again, it's more than just reporting now. So it's really neat what um, the just this ability can do. Awesome. Well, that, that really basically concludes our demo today. We're just focusing on uploading files directly using the UI and uploading files using the uh, One Lake File Explorer installation that you can have on your computer. So both the links are in the chat window as well as in the description on this video. If you want to learn more, go read up on those documentation pieces from Microsoft, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.